In this online lecture, we're going to take everything we've learned before about structure determination, which is knowing how the mass spec machine works, the IR machine works, and the NMR machine works. We're going to pull it all together and use the data to determine what structure we have. This is what it's all about. This is why we've been learning all these different machines. And let me show you how it works here. Let's look at sample problem one. So here's how it works. Remember, we find some unknown substance that we don't know what it is. And we first, let's say, stick it into the mass spec machine. And this is what we get for the molecular formula. We would also take our sample and run it through the IR machine. And let's say we happen to get this IR spectra. We could also run our sample through the NMR and get both a CNMR spectra and an HNMR spectra. And let's pretend this is on an organic chemistry multiple choice test, then these are the possible answers. Our molecule could be any one of these, and we have to determine from this data which one is the molecule. So a great place to start, obviously, is the molecular formula. Notice our molecule has eight carbons and two oxygens. With that alone, we could rule out answers. Notice this molecule right here doesn't have any oxygens, and it only has seven carbons. So that gets rid of him. Another thing we should notice is this right here. Remember, that's a very obvious broad peak for an OH functional group. This means that our answer must have an OH in it. That enables us to eliminate this guy right here and this structure right here, leaving the two bottom structures because they have OH substituents. So now let's look at the CNMR here. Notice it's in the decoupled mode, so there's no splitting, which means the number of peaks should correspond to the number of carbons in our molecule. And notice we have one peak here, two, we got three, four, five, and six. Therefore, our molecule has six types of carbons. And what you can do at this point is see if you can rule out an answer. In fact, let's go to this molecule right here and see how many carbons he should have in the CNMR. We'll start here and call these the A-type carbons. We'll call this a B-type carbon. Notice there's no symmetry here because of that OH in the lower left, which means this is the C-type carbon here. This would be a D-type carbon, E, F right here, G right here, H. Notice that's a total of eight carbons. So that means this could not be our molecule here and we could rule him out. Now notice again, if this were a multiple choice test, you'd be done. You already ruled out all the other structures. It has to be this one right here that's left. On some organic chemistry tests, you can get away with this. You simply don't have to use all the data. And if your orgo test is multiple choice, this is the direction that you want to work. Meaning you're not really trying to find the right molecule, you're trying to rule out molecules. But just to be sure, let's make sure our molecule does fit all of the data. Let's first see how many carbons he has. We'll start here. That's an A-type carbon. This would be B-type carbon right here. These would be C-type carbons because we do have symmetry in this molecule. This would be the D-type carbons. This would be an E. And this would be the F-type carbon right here. Notice that is six types of carbons. So that satisfies the CNMR. But what about the HNMR? Remember, notice right here, this symmetrical peak system here between seven and eight is, remember, a strong sign of a para-substituted benzene ring. And notice, look at our molecule, it actually is para-substituted. So that means the hydrogens on the benzene ring would be responsible for these signals right here. Which means the remaining types of hydrogens would be due to this signal here, this one here, and then this one here. That means not including the hydrogens on the benzene ring, there are three types of hydrogens. Let's make sure. If we call these right here the A-type hydrogens, these would be the B-type hydrogens, and this OH hydrogen right here could be the C-type hydrogen. Notice you would have the three hydrogens plus the hydrogens on the benzene ring, which means we should see a total of four peaks in our HNMR, and that's exactly what we have here. Remember, we're counting the para peak as one signal due to all the hydrogens on the benzene ring. 
So that means this is definitely our structure. And notice all I'm trying to show you here is the thought process, how we use the data to not necessarily find the right structure, but to rule out structures so we could land on the correct one. Let's make sure you got this. I want you to see another sample problem. Not all of them are going to be as straightforward as that first one. Watch what happens in this example right here. Let's say, for instance, here is our data. The mass spec says C6H12O2 is the molecular formula. They give us the IR. They don't give us the CNMR. They just give us the HNMR. And these are the molecules that might be our unknown. Well, again, start with the actual molecular formula. Notice he has six carbons and two oxygens, and that's exactly what all these molecules have. So the molecular formula doesn't rule out anything for us. But however, noticing the IR, there's something very distinct about it, and that's this very strong signal right here. Remember, this is around the 1700 mark, and that's usually a sign of a carbonyl functional group. But notice, look at our answer choices. Every single one has a carbonyl group. So the IR is not much help for us here. Let's turn our direction now to the HNMR. Notice we can see that there's two signals, one here and one here. So that means there's two types of hydrogens in our molecule. Well, notice, look at this bottom molecule right here. How many hydrogens would he have? Let's call these the A-type hydrogens. These would be the B-type hydrogens. This would be a C-type hydrogen. And these would be the D-type hydrogens. So right away, that would be four types of hydrogens. This cannot be our molecule. That leaves us with these two structures right here. Let's see how many types of hydrogens are in the top molecule. If we call these right here the A-type hydrogens, they're all equivalent, again, due to signal averaging. And that means this hydrogen right here is different, so this molecule would have two types of hydrogens. We can't rule him out. Let's do the same analysis on the molecule below. He's got an A-type hydrogen here, and all these hydrogens right here would be equivalent. They'd be the B-type hydrogens, so he also has two types of hydrogens. So the first aspect of NMR doesn't help us distinguish these. Let's move to another aspect of NMR. For instance, let's consider the multiplicity. Notice the signals in our HNMR are both singlets. This is a singlet here. This is a singlet right here. Let's try to use multiplicity to rule out an answer. Again, we'll start with the top molecule here. We'll look at these A-type hydrogens, and we'll say, what is their N value? so that we can plug it into the n plus 1 rule to see what splitting we should get. But notice here, the A hydrogens are connected to that methyl carbon, and that methyl carbon has this carbon right here as a neighbor. And there are no hydrogens on him. So the n value for the A hydrogens is 0, and 0 plus 1 is 1, so we should expect to see a singlet for these hydrogens. So let's now do the same analysis, but for the B-type hydrogen. Notice their only neighbor right here is this oxygen. And again, this oxygen has no hydrogens on it. So the N value for the B hydrogens is also zero, giving us also a singlet in the HNMR. So the top molecule stays. Let's do the same analysis for the bottom molecule. And we'll start right here with the A hydrogens. Again, the only neighboring carbon is this carbon right here. He has no hydrogen, so again, n equals 0, and the n plus 1 rule says that the A hydrogen should be a singlet. So let's look at the B-type hydrogens. Again, here they are right here. The only neighbor they have is this carbon here. Again, he has no hydrogens, so the n plus 1 rule would also say that the B hydrogens are going to be a singlet. So notice multiplicity doesn't help us rule anything out here we need to keep going through the rest of the aspects of HNMR. So why don't we try integration, which was the third aspect of NMR that we learned. Remember, to get the integration, we're going to look at this vertical line right here and compare that length to the length of this vertical line over here. And notice the relative heights of these vertical lines. The ratio is simply 3 to 1. 3 being the peak on the right, and 1 being the peak on the left. 
Let's see if we would get that actual ratio in our molecules. Let's start with the top one. What would be the ratio of A to B hydrogens? Well, notice if you count, there's a total of nine A hydrogens and a total of three B hydrogens. But remember, the NMR spectra always reports the most simplest ratio. So if you reduce nine to three, you actually get three to one. So the integration doesn't rule out our top structure. Let's do the same analysis for the bottom one. What is the ratio of A to B hydrogens? Notice in this case there are three A hydrogens and there are nine B hydrogens. And again, reducing this to its simplest form, you would also get a one to three or three to one ratio. So notice integration also doesn't rule out these structures. We really only have one more aspect to inspect here, and that is the shifting. Let's see if that can help us narrow it down. Let's start with the top molecule. Notice it's these B hydrogens right here. They're actually pretty close to this oxygen, and they're also close to that carbon that's doubly bonded to the oxygen. Remember, these items cause hydrogens to be very shifted. Whereas, notice the A hydrogens here. They're connected to a carbon that's connected to another carbon, and then to the carbonyl carbon, which has the oxygen. So that means, notice the B hydrogens are closer to the oxygens, so they should be more shifted, so this should be our B hydrogen peak in the HNMR. And therefore, this should be our A peak, not as shifted. But let's see if that shifting matches up with our integration. Remember, the B-type hydrogen is unit one, and the A-type hydrogens are three. And look at our molecule. There is one B hydrogen for every three A hydrogens. So notice this top molecule fits all four aspects of the HNMR. At this point, we could only hope that the bottom one doesn't. So let's do our same type of analysis here. Remember, these are the B-type hydrogens right here. They're connected to a carbon that's directly connected to this carbon and then to the oxygen over here. So notice they have a pretty good distance from the oxygen. Whereas the A hydrogens right here, they're connected to a carbon that's directly connected to this carbon that has a double bond and two oxygens technically, this one here and the one to the lower right. So we should definitely see the A hydrogen peak more shifted. So let's label that in our HNMR spectra. This would be the A-type hydrogen, and this right here would be the B-type hydrogens. Let's check our shifting here with the integration. Remember, the ratio is one A hydrogen for every three B hydrogens. And notice that's exactly what's observed in our molecule here. There is one A hydrogen for every three B hydrogens. So it seems that both molecules match up with all four aspects of the HNMR. And at this point, it seems we couldn't distinguish these two. This could possibly happen to you on an orgo test. And what I want you to know is how to get around this. The answer is simply by using your chemical shift chart. Remember, we talked about the chemical shift chart before. I also mentioned that it's something that you want to ask your professor if he's going to provide one on your orgo test or if you have to memorize it. For instance, if you were to look at your chemical shift chart for HNMR, you would see this right here, that hydrogens on a carbon that are directly connected to a carbonyl group peak at around 2.1 delta units. It's this piece of information right here that's going to help us resolve this. Notice only one molecule has this particular arrangement. It's actually the bottom molecule. That means notice this right here, this carbon with the A hydrogens here. He is our methyl hydrogens connected to a carbonyl, which means that A signal should peak at around 2.1 delta units. But notice, remember we said this was our A peak. Look where he's actually peaking, between three and four, not near 2.1. That means that the bottom molecule can't be our structure, which rules him out and means now we have our answer. It's this molecule right here. So notice, structure determination can get a little tricky. Some problems are a lot more harder than others. 
for our orgo exam, we want to definitely make sure we can handle the hard and the easy. And just like everything else in organic chemistry, you need to practice this a lot to really get it down. Most chemistry textbooks have many practice structure determination problems at the end of a chapter. Use these two sample problems as a guideline to help you determine the structures for those problems.